All right, today I figured I'd go ahead, I come back from the show. We had some really nice babies hatch. I didn't get a chance to take them out this morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them out and show you guys how we set the babies up when they're hatched. Um, if you got any questions about hatching geckos, genetics, anything like that, feel free, you know what I'm saying, just message me or send me a YouTube. And you can find us on YouTube at uh, Pet Tiles Pet Store or you can find us on Facebook. So definitely check us out there. So come on, let's look up. All right, this is our homemade incubator. We made it out of a mini fridge. And uh, as you see, we had some babies hatch last night. So this looks like it came from the emmerine emmerine we saw hatching earlier. Um, so this would have been the sun glow to the het. Diablo, sun glow, um, het, blizzard, Diablo to het Diablo. So... Waiting on these little babies to get their eyes open all the way up. And um, we're going to go ahead, and I like to put them in here, and we're going to set the boxes up. And this is the kind of box we use, just a regular, you know, shoe box. So we'll take each one of them out. These are the Amarine to Super Hypo Tangerine Carrot Tails. So they should come out really, really light as they get older. So there's those two. Oh, he's getting his eyes open. Looking nice. All right. If you like the videos, be sure to like, subscribe on YouTube. Gonna start doing a lot more videos. Um, and we set them up really, really simple. I saw it done a lot of different ways. We tried a lot of different methods, but for us, this works the best. So I move these little guys out of the way. I take a little piece of egg crate, sit here, get them somewhere to hide, hang out on. I do the same thing on this side. Put those guys in there. Set down the cap here, cap here. That will be for calcium. And we've got two feeding dishes. All right. Got some mealworms I already got. And they usually won't eat for the first one or two days. And these are some mealworms that we actually bred ourselves. So if you look in, we've got a mealworm video coming up about breeding mealworms. And a leopard gecko, believe it or not, even as it hatches out of the egg, can eat a one-inch mealworm at full size with no problem. So definitely don't worry about it. Um, there's a lot of different sizes in there just in case some get intimidated. This time we hatched the babies inside the geo eggs. Uh, they were pretty cool. I like using those. Um, and then I'll show you what we use for lay boxes real quick. Yeah, still got some stuff in it. We use lay boxes with um, sphagnum moss and um, reptibark. I mean, and um, eco earth. And then we've got some simpler hides like this, which is just a regular, which are cut out. Same stuff inside. Keep it really moist. I keep these ready to go for when the girls start ovulating and I start to see the eggs. So um, we've got those guys in. Last thing is calciums. This is what I put in when they start to grow out. It's a mix between bionate and um, calcium with D3. And some people say no D3, some D3. So sometimes I'll keep them on it with the D3 up until they get a little older, switch them off, and just vary it back and forth. This is a mix between the two that I've already pre-mixed. So I'll just put it in like that. Put a little in like that. The leopard geckos will readily find the calcium lick it out and go to it themselves they'll hear the mealworms inside the mealworm dish moving around and that'll make them want to go check them out and um let's go ahead and get these guys checked what i'll do here i'll move them over and um start to weigh them and get their weights all right Let's see, bunny. Uh, yes, I use. All right, 
let's tear this out real quick. Take the first one. He's about four grams. Sometimes I put them in a cup or a bowl or something to weigh them out, but I tend to find that sometimes it's inaccurate. So and he was a little bigger and I could pretty much tell that. So that's six grams. Hmm. All right. And then we'll take these guys over here. I'll come back later and I'll give them a label. Um, their top on, give them a label, bring them over to the rack. The rack is heated by the back heat or the bottom heat, depending on which rack they're on. So they'll go onto the rack and they'll stay there and grow out. And let's get a tear here and test the other two. Let's see. This one, another four grams. Oh. And let's see. Turn it up. Another four grams. So we'll get these guys set up. And like I said, I usually won't eat any mealworms or anything for the first two to three days, but just in case somebody decides that they're hungry, we will definitely have them food in the box. So that was a quick setup of how we do the babies when they first are hatched and um, get an idea how simple it is so if you want to see more videos like this please like subscribe share um more people get intrigued about leopard geckos the more people will learn about genetics the more people will see hatching and breeding genetically sound geckos um key point before we close this video there are three types of albino leopard geckos no none of the three albino leopard geckos should be bred together so if you have albino or lizards or geckos out there that are het for albino or are albino, you should know what type of albino they are because these three albino genes should never be mixed. So just keep that in mind when you're purchasing your leopard geckos. Know if they are pet quality or breeder quality. Breeder quality will always have genetic background with them. You know, they will be sound geckos so you'll know where they came from. And that pretty much covers it. See you next time.